Sure, yes. move a centimetre that way. To your left. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can stay there. No, <laughs> we never do. Look, literally, so how, how, as soon as he says hi, I'm like this. This week's Weird Wednesday is sponsored by the best places to dive in the USA. Hey everyone and welcome to this week's Weird Wednesday. Let's jump straight in. Uh, so sea lions are demanding fish now. Uh, this is a classic Weird Wednesday story. A pair of sea lions have been filmed jumping onto the back of a moving a moving boat yep. in Mexico and demanding fish from the boaters. It's brilliant. Uh, the video shows the sea lions clinging to the back of the boat and refusing to move until they've been fed. They, they know the way it Works. Yes, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, the first huge male sea lion jumps aboard uh, and was met with uh, sort of looks of disbelief from the people on the boat. <laughs> yeah. um, impressed with his moves, uh, they award the sea lion with some fish. That was their first mistake. Yes. Um, when his belly was finally full, he slides back into the water and then the smaller female si uh, sea lion jumps on the back of the boat and demands fish. Um, it's brilliant. I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, genius. genius it is smart animals. of them. Um, and yeah, next time I want a sea lion to jump on the back of the boat uh, with a top hat, a monocle, uh, spinning, spinning a cane. cane. Yeah, yeah. work for their food, not just... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> I think it's genius. I, and, and the fact that the thing, the boot, the boat, the boots, the, the boot. boots, the boat was moving as well. So like chasing it, it's like, boing, it's like, what up? Can I have some fish? No, well, you're gonna give me some, or I'm just gonna stay here. <laughs> you don't really have much of an option. I'm yours now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you haven't paid, you don't have a ticket. So I don't care, give me fish. <laughs> Welcome to your time on this rock. Comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> time to oh, go, get off, get off, get off. Anyway, so Mark, Nazi gold has been found. So. Throughout the years, rumours of hidden Nazi gold, artwork and other treasures have been, you know, taken by the Nazis by during, during World War II have always been the subjects of movies, comics and obviously even The Simpsons. Yeah. Now, of course, this has all been speculation due to no one knowing what actually happens to the loot, you know, because obviously the war and everything. It was a bit, a bit of a kerfuffle at the time. <laughs> but anyway, a Nazi ship has been found in the Black Sea. The ship in question is called the Boy Ferdison, I hope I said that right, yeah. uh, which is believed to help transport stolen artwork and among other things. Um, experts believe the ship had loot uh, taken from the Soviet Union before it was sunk by a submarine in 1943. So the plan is now to dive the site in question and conduct a detailed study of the ship. They even plans, obviously depending on what they find, to actually bring the sheep, the sheep, the sheep, the, sh the ship <laughs> out of its 19 metre watery grave. Uh, it's a very exciting time for divers and historians and of course the flying hellfish. <laughs> if anyone gets that reference, you're cool. <clears throat> Uh, this one goes back more just to the, the weirdness. Well, Nazi gold's weird. Like, okay, it was a bit thin on the ground. Yeah, but this just, this is, makes it pale. Okay, so an alligator <laughs> was handcuffed by animal control. Uh, a, a house in Louisiana uh, got a shock when they found an alligator on their front lawn. Um, naturally, they called Animal Control, who came swiftly to collect the beast. Um, there's actually a video of this that we'll put up. Uh, the, they follow protocol by jumping on it, taping its mouth shut, which, yeah, that's, that do. seems quite safe. Um, but then something rather odd happened. The officer at the tail end of the alligator then decided to handcuff the gator's back legs <laughs> behind it. But because he was being filmed, he was kind of... After he started, he realised how hard it was, and he's like, <laughs> "No, no, I, I, I have to continue this." And, and make, uh, oh, jeez. So, um, so <laughs> now um, you, you're no doubt thinking, "Okay, then, well, what the hell was this to stop the alligator from doing?" Yeah. Especially, it was his back legs. His back legs. So I uh, get uh, it. So he can't move around or attack people. <laughs> attack people with his back legs. Yeah, back legs. The, yeah. Uh, uh, I just. It's a bit silly though because obviously he started it, like you said, he started. So he'd got to finish, he'd been filmed, so it was like he realised one couldn't fit. He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to get the second one out. I was like, but now I can't handcuff the front. <laughs> so literally, it was, was like pointless. an It was like an episode of Cops where they like jumped on top of him and like, right, yeah, you have the rem to remain silent. I mean, uh, I get it. <laughs> Alligators, gators, they're, they're strong animals, you know. Being in the area where this was filmed, Florida, they probably, you know, naturally catch at least one or two probably a day, knowing, yeah. these, knowing them. 
they seemed pretty amateurish. I'm guessing they were the rookies. Because even like when they were dragging it out, it took ages. And then yeah. like, they were taping them up, they were like, no, no. <laughs> Tonight, man. Uh, off camera, they uh, they then corner the gator into what looks like a, a bin bag uh, and tied up with a piece of nakado rope. Uh, and but after pleading guilty to uh, to chilling out, the gator was fined one hundred and fifty dollars uh, and ten hours of community service. The poor guy. <laughs> I don't just, just I don't get it. <sighs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? You have the wrong right, the right the to right remain to... silent. I can't even speak, mate. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> it's because they take the... <laughs> <laughs> Another random weird story. Please don't punch the dolphins. GK wins. So Manus in Brazil is a tourist hotspot due to the light brown murky river that runs through it. Another reason why the waters are so famous is because it has, well, features river dolphins. And these pink dolphins bring massive tourism for the area. So a big, a big plus to be honest with you, you know, conservation and all that sort of thing, but bringing, you know, money into the local area. You can swim with the pink dolphins, you can feed the pink dolphins, feed, sorry, the pink dolphins, and you can even take selfies with the pink dolphins, which I think is a bit, all right. Yeah, um, but you always have to have in the back of your head that these are wild animals. You're going to their habitat, it's wild. But for some tourists, you know, they forget that. So when they take things a bit too far with the dolphin, they get a big shock when the dolphin fights back. <laughs> um, and you know, it, kind of one of those things where it's it's your own nature, you know, it's a defense mechanism. <laughs> you, something comes at you, you either run away, or you know, you, you, you kind of- Fight or flight. Fight or flight, <laughs> yeah, you kind of hit it off. But like I said earlier, they're wild animals. You're in their habitat. What are you, you doing there? Yeah, you can't really do anything. So, <clears throat> because of this, and because of people getting a bit too comfortable, there's actually been like the tourism and the people that do these tours have to officially tell people not to punch <laughs> Please dolphins. Don't. Apparently, it's it's a big thing <laughs> um, where they're punching dolphins. It's uh. really weird. So anyway, yeah. The fact that they've had to, you know, make an official warning, going, look, don't punch, yeah. don't punch the dog. Like, you're in the habitat, they're gonna freak out. You know, of course, you're picking it up. Yeah. I mean, they're social creatures, but only you only do things so far with wild animals. Yeah, remember to put sunscreen on, drink lots of water. Oh yeah, don't punch, punch the, the dolphins. dolphins. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so silly. Oh. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird and it's wrong. It, it's weird Wednesday. Yes. Um, following on from that, don't clean your fish tank. Um, cleaning your fish tank is now officially dangerous. Uh, a family in Adelaide are, uh, are being treated for poisoning after um, uh, just because they cleaned their fish tank. This is worrying. Yes. Yes. Um, a family of six were having a chilled out Sunday, cleaning out their fish tank uh, until they ingested airborne spores which had been released from the coral in the tank. Um, the, the house ended up being quarantined whilst... <laughs> breaking Bad scene, they literally <laughs> sealed everything up. Man. Uh, so yeah, quarantined while experts studied the site uh, and then a cleanup crew had to pretty much disinfect the entire house. Uh, and ingestion is now underway. It's investigation. Investigation is underway. Uh, now uh, to try to figure out how this all happened. It's truth. <laughs> I'm glad I have like, I have like, at home I have a small fish tank with just cold water, fresh water fish. No coral. If you have, if you have coral, have fake coral. <laughs> just, just don't have real coral. Just have fake plastic. Uh, so Ceramic. Ex yeah. Experts believe that it wasn't just the coral that could have caused this, and now they're now looking into the uh, the quality of the water as well. Maybe that's why they need to clean it out because it was just toxic. Toxic. Uh, it might have been just the perfect storm of yeah. just yeah poor water col uh, quality and just the coral just kind of defending itself, releasing these spores out yeah. into the air. Yeah, that's not really natural for coral. <laughs> Such a weird, look, looking at the article, looking at the pictures, like the house is all sealed up. You've got like emergency services around there. Like, yeah, don't enter. All for, all for. They cleaned for out their fish, fish tank. tank. Hey. So this one is a bit of a sad one. It's weird because it's ironic, but yeah, it's, I, I wasn't going to put it in, but it's kind of like, I put it in for, because there's a reason behind it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, 
it's serious, but it's weird. Yeah, it is, is weird. It's a bit stupid as well. Yeah. Anyway, so Shark Lover is killed by a shark. Now this is a tragic story, but it's also very ironic. A young man called Adrian devoted his life to uh, reducing, if not stopping, shark deaths off the French island of Reunion in the Indian Ocean. That's why he joins the Shark Patrol. Now last Sunday, which is the 30th of April, he jumped into the sea with his bodyboard in a part of the beach which has been banned for water sports due to shark attacks. And of course within minutes, you know, in the water, the shark bit into his right thigh and into his groin area. So he was pulled out of the sea, pulled out of the ocean, but sadly he couldn't be saved and died half an hour after the attack. They did everything that they could, but I'm pretty sure just, well, you bled out, that's a pretty yeah. serious injury. Uh, personally, to me, it just seems like such a waste of life. Being a part of the shark patrol, he should have known the area was a hotspot for sharks, you know, considering it's been banned. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a conservationist, he loves the ocean, he loved, you know, sharks, he loved everything about, you know, that was his life. Mm. So, if he had the information, why did he go in? Yeah, it shame. seems. Yeah, I mean, it's ironic because he got killed by the thing that he was trying to protect. Yeah. But then he had all the information and he shouldn't have done it. I mean, I, I get it. Obviously, the area's got some good waves or anything like that. Or, you know, to, to stream on the bodyboard. I mean, he could have gone surfing personally. I mean, that's mm. quite cool. But still, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's it's weird because yeah of what happened. But then also as well, it's tragic because it could have easily been avoided, avoided. Yeah. massively. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, back to some lighter but also weird news. Uh, this one's all about shaving manatees. <laughs> I need that. Yeah, you definitely need that. <laughs> uh, so manatees are not beautiful. Oh. Who wrote that? Oh. Um, so now manatees are not beautiful or buff. Oh, that's mean, Mark. Why would you say that? <laughs> uh, but they do something that no other mammal has. No. Mammal has. They do something that no other mammal has. Yep. <laughs> um, they have um, they have body hair with superpowers. Superpowers, not just regular body hair. No, super. Um, this super. is super body hair. Scientists have always been fascinated with manatees' body hair uh, and what they actually do, because dolphins dolphins are actually, well, I think, some pinnipeds are born with like whiskers, but then soon after they're born, they just Lose. fall out. Yeah. Um, but working with Pittsburgh Zoo, scientists are now shaving manatees. <laughs> See him in the chair. Yeah. What would you like? <laughs> to the top. Number three. one all over. <laughs> uh, to, uh, to find a definitive answer uh, to what these hairs are all about. Uh, of course, this isn't the first time scientists have studied manatees' hairs, uh, but all other results have been inconclusive. Uh, so what are the results, we, uh, we hear you ask? Uh, is the hair for uh, any kind of mating ritual? Uh, is it a type of braille to help with their vision? Um, no, it's, it's none of those theories, in fact. Uh, the hairs are there to help them navigate uh, in their home waters. So, so it's, it's basically a built-in TomTom yeah, GPS. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. For, um, oh, that can't be it. That's it. There must be more to this story. No, it's, it's just like a, an underwater GPS. Yeah, literally. Because like, yeah. the article's like, what is it? What is it? It's just like, and then at the end it's like, that's it. it. It's like, okay. <laughs> but it's cool though. It's, yeah, they've been, you know, trying to research this for years, shaving manatees. <laughs> How do they get, uh, what I want to know is if they razor. shaved it, it was like, right, so we've got this. Um, what do we do? What, I don't know. Um, I think it's to do with basically because the hairs attached to the blood cells in the body, like the nerve endings and stuff. Right. And then it uses the current to determine where it is, because apparently their, their vision, it's almost, it almost is kind of like Braille, because their vision's pretty poor. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they, they, the, the hairs, the random hairs are strategically placed. Ah, oh, so you just got the regular manatees just kind of going home, and then the shaved manatees just getting lost. Yeah, so, yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> They've been put in a special, special pen, just to keep them there till oh. they grow back. Or one of those sticks with a white <laughs> ping pong ball on it. Yeah. Oh, Put a little beeper on it. I feel bad for them now. Well, you did call them ugly. <laughs> and you did say they weren't buff. I didn't write the script. <laughs> uh, that, that's it for this week's Weird Wednesday. Uh, if you missed it, uh, check out last week's Scuba Tube. There'll be a link somewhere there. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. But wasn't there supposed to be a, a link to a video? There's, oh, yes. There's like a breaching shark video yes. we're going to pop up we're now. We're going to pop that on there now. So. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. Bye.